Hello and welcome to the show. You know what, I've been having a lot of fun working this colt and you've been watching me for the last several weeks. But of course you've already figured out this is all happening here in front of the cameras in one day. And the part I really want you to know is if, if you look at the condition of the horse at the end of each week and the beginning of next, nothing's changing. We're not doing a whole bunch of work in between. This, you're seeing over a six week time period what's happening in real time. And today we're gonna do our best to get a ride on this colt right now. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true One of the questions I get asked a lot is, Ken, should I use a snaffle bit or a halter or a bozelle when I first start riding my colt? And here's what I really firmly believe. What are you comfortable with? Because that's what's important, your comfort level. For me, I use what's most comfortable for the particular horse. This particular horse has not had a snaffle bit, but he's had a lot of halter work done with him. So if I just come back here and ask him to give to that halter right there and start preparing him for the reins, I'm probably gonna ride this horse in the halter the first time because it's gonna be easier. But if you wanna use a snaffle bit, go for it. I use a snaffle bit a lot. Most of my colts, I start in a snaffle. As I've said, I'm practicing for Road to the Horse, so I'm doing lots of different things and just kind of seeing what's working really good for me and over the years I've learned a ton and I just want to keep kind of playing with it. What I'm doing, I ask him to soften his nose and then move his hindquarters over. And as soon as his hindquarters move over, release him and do it again and come to the other side. Ask him to soften his nose. Bring that hand to the outside. As he softens his nose right there, release it. Ask him again as he softens his nose, shift your focus to his hind end and let his hind end move over. I didn't poke, push, or prod. Horses are masters of reading intent. So when I pick up this rein and I get his nose soft, right here, wait for the soft. When I get his nose soft, then right here, I move his hind end over, right there, okay? And I release him and come back and do it again. Soften his nose. Move his hind end over. I want to have control of that hind end before I ever step up on him. The very first time I put my foot in the saddle or the very first time I sit down, I want to know when I pick up on that halter and lead rope and I bend his nose, he knows how to move his hind end away. Why? Well, because that's the emergency brakes. The hind end is the engine room and I want to be able to shut it off. So when I come back here, and I soften that nose right here and I ask that hind end to step right there in front, right there in front. When he steps his outside hind leg in front of his inside hind leg, his legs are kind of tied in a knot. So he can't blow up and buck and take off. I want that done before I ever think about getting on his back. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I do with my rope halters is I make sure that the loop down here that we hook the lead rope to is big enough that I, when I hook my lead rope up, I can come back and push the slack through there, okay? And make a hackamore. Let me do this time. This one's a little bit tighter than normal. I'm gonna run it through there. And Run it right back. There we go. Take your reins, set them over your saddle horn, measure them to about where you want them to be. Now, I take my lead rope, I wrap it around the top, pull it pretty tight, come underneath the bottom, Pull it pretty tight and go right through the center of the loop. Pull it pretty snug. Come right through the center of the loop again. Pull it pretty snug. Pull backward on that. And what I've got is a knot right there that works much like a bozelle. 
it's got some weight to it will help and I've got a nice set of loop rope reins makes it easy for me to use while I'm riding all right check my saddle over make sure everything is the way I like it and then jump on no soften his nose right there move his hindquarters now take my foot add weight in the stirrup right there that's enough walk away I don't need much more than that walk back over here take my foot add weight in the stirrup watch him keep your hands together here pay attention walk away he looks bored right one ear forward one ear back gee what's going on that's the look I'm looking for I want my horse to look relaxed I don't want my horse like Wah! what's going on I don't want him all scared and eyes big and ears bugging out no I want him quiet and I come back here step up step down right don't stay too long I told you guys a few weeks ago my dad said dead fish and company both stink after three days don't stay too long okay grab a hold of that saddle horn and that mane right here get a good hold look at him he looks relaxed go straight up what do I do if he moves follow your gut if your gut says stay put stay put if your gut says get out get out while the getting's good do what your gut tells you follow your gut and you're gonna have a good ride step up pet on him put your hand on that saddle horn reach back here never let go of completely always keep a hold of something you need something to brace on right you don't want to get up there and be all scared and stiff I've seen people do that they get on their unbroke horse and they look like this they're like oh no oh oh don't do that move around only things that eat them sneak you don't want to be sneaky move around don't let him forget now when you're stepping up and down you get to that point where you're like gee I think he's ready for me to get on he's relaxed he's good I'm gonna get on do yourself a favor and walk away from him step over here and ask yourself this question is he ready the answer has to be yes if the answer is well I think so no well I'm sick of doing this no the answer has to be yes he's ready I can get on safely then I'm going to come back over here put my foot in the stirrup and get right back off again don't stay too long he's not had you swing a leg over him like that before he's never done that you do not have to prove you're a cowboy unless you are a world champion saddle bronc rider worrying about that other stirrup isn't going to help you anyways so step up sit down get off right back over here put your foot in that stirrup step up sit down step off good boy you come this way step up sit down my other foot naturally found the stirrup and step off so as I stepped off of him there was just a little tenseness of the muscles that's okay we're gonna work through that we've got time right we're not in the movie the Cowboys and we're not riding the rough off of him we're starting a horse that's gonna have another 27 years of a great riding career likely that's what we want to think about right we want to build something that's going to last a long long time and it's going to be safe and fun every single day okay so as we come back to him relax him stay calm stay quiet have fun don't get oh my nervousness and you know what if things go bad they can it happens it's not the end of the world right rock around pet on him do you know God invented the saddle horn 
Don't believe me? Listen to what people say when they get a hold of it. They all start praying. All right? When you get on this colt, there's nothing wrong with holding on to that saddle horn. Now I'm going to take and just bend his nose ever so slightly. Right out here, out to the outside. Soften his nose. Let him see me up here. All right? Now, you're going to discover once you get on him. Okay, we're going to walk around. That's okay. I wasn't really planning that, but if he wants to move, I'm good with that. You're going to discover when you get on him that you actually have a favorite hand. Okay? So my favorite hand happens to be my left one. I'm very right-handed, but when I get on a young horse, I like my left hand. I don't know why, I just do. So you're going to discover that. And it's very hard then to use your other hand. Now before you get off, here's an important piece. Rock that saddle. Let that horse know something's going to change. Step off. Don't just try to bail and run. Give him some warning. Step away from him. <sighs> Remember to breathe. It helps the tingling feeling in your lips go away. Right? All of a sudden you get some oxygen back in your system and you stop shaking and trembling. You get a little control of yourself. That's all pretty normal. I'm going to tell you the honest truth. If you can get on this horse and not be scared, you're in trouble. You should be nervous. He's capable of hurting you. Not on purpose, just because he's a horse and he's never been ridden before. It is dangerous. So don't be down on yourself for being nervous and afraid. That's pretty darn normal, right? Take it in stride. Step away. Let yourself calm down. I get myself sat down really good, deep in my saddle. I will not start a colt with poor equipment. I want a good saddle, one I'm comfortable with, one I like. I'm not going to borrow yours. It will be mine, right? Soften that nose right here. Now, holding his nose here with slack, but, but keeping his nose bent, you're going to ask him to move a little bit. Right there. Reach up here and pet on him. If he wants to walk around, let him walk. Perfect. Perfect. Soften his nose to the other side. Right there. Good. Soften his nose. Perfect. Move around a little bit. Reach back here and pet on his butt. That's going to happen someday, you know. You're going to kick him in the butt. Reach out here. Oh, Ken, I don't want to do that. It might spook him. It's less likely to spook him now than it is in five days. Right? Right now, there's a chance you're going to get through it. Five days from now, the chances are a lot slimmer. Good. Move around. Don't stay forever. Go ahead and step down. Walk away. You don't have to lope him off. Do you know what? If you wanted to, I'm going to ride him more today. But if you wanted to, you'd quit right there. You could quit as soon as you got on him. There's no rules for what you have to do. You can stay longer. You can do more. There's lots. Or you can quit. It's all been successful. Staying too long is what causes wrecks. Right? So soften. Play with him. Soften that nose. Ask him to move. We've kissed to him through the whole training process to move his feet or to get his attention. So now when I pick up on that and kiss to him, it's pretty natural for him to move his feet around. Now right there, he kind of jetted forward a little bit, but he didn't soften, so I don't release him. I wait for the whole piece. I need everything. And that's where I see people get in trouble. They take a hold of their horse's nose and he, he's a colt and he kind of goes, no, I don't want to turn. And they get scared and they let go. Now they're creating a horse that's learned to fight the bit, learned to fight pressure. Don't do that. Just let him follow that feel. Let him find that softness. There we go. Right there. Change of directions. Rock that saddle. Move those feet. Ride him forward. Move those feet. Ride him forward. Wow, we're going on a big old trail ride, right? I mean, we're out here now. We've gone maybe 10, 12 steps. That's okay. 
I had a young man come up to me one time after a colt starting demonstration and he said, Ken, I think you should have trotted that horse around and loped him around more. And I said, well, you know what, young man? That round pen's still there and still is that horse. Go have fun. But for me, I follow where I think the horse is at. I try to let him determine for me or dictate for me what we're up to. You watch my legs real close. I'm not kicking. I move them around, let him feel them. But why kick? It's his first day. He has no idea what that kick would mean. There's only two reasons why a young horse bucks you off, plain and simple. On the first ride or two, if he bucks, there's only two reasons why. You hurt him or you scared him. That's it. Sometimes both. You hurt him and that scares him. But that's it. There's only two reasons. You hurt him or you scared him. So your job is not to hurt him and not to scare him. That's it. It's that simple. Don't hurt him. Don't scare him. And we're going to have a really good time. When we come to this side, right, we sort of get neglectful. But a horse only broke on one side is a horse only half broke. Step up there. Feel that. Relax. Everybody's happy. Go for a ride. Soften that nose. There we go. Soften that nose. There we go. We're off and running. We're off to the races now. There we go. All this cotton blowing around in here feels like it's snowing. Feels like the 15th of December instead of the 15th of June. And all of that gets to you, gets to your horse. Atmospheric conditions make a difference. Don't let them. Just go along, have a good ride, have fun. Take care of it, get it all done. Right there, ooh. Little bit of tension come up in him. Soften that nose come back around there. I'd really like him to just kind of walk out, right? If you notice, we're moving a lot, but we're not going anywhere. There we go. We're not going straight very much. There we go. Those are the things I'm looking for. When I get done with a colt like this and I'm all done, I treat him exactly like the broke horse that I think he is. I unsaddle him the same way I saddle him. Real relaxed, real carefree, not worried about what's gonna go wrong. I just take the saddle off in exactly the same fashion that it went on, right? Right there. And you're a little bit dictated by weather. I might have been going to do more, but there's lightning and thunder cracking in the background. And you know what? We're not going to do that on a young horse. So we just pull it off of him and call it good. How much more could you ask? He tried his hardest. He did his best. No wrecks, no problems. That's a good day in colt starting. Stewardship is a godly character trait that we get talked about a lot. And you know what? Honestly, let's break it down. What is it? Stewardship is caring for what you're given. Whatever that is. It doesn't matter what it is. It's caring for it. So as a child, I remember having uh, a rabbit business and I, I sold a lot of rabbits and it was really a neat deal. My dad encouraged me to do it, but he struggled getting me to do my chores. I wasn't a good steward. And finally he sat me down one day and he said, Ken, you need to understand something. Those rabbits didn't choose to be in that cage. You chose to put them in that cage. So it's your job to take care of them. And from that time on, I did my chores regularly. But once I realized, look, it's my job to take care of them. They become my charge. When I look at your horses, I, your horse doesn't have to have the greatest stall. He doesn't have to have the most expensive feed. He has to have clean, humane, caring care. 
That's what he has to have. For me to, to think of being a steward of my animals, I want to care for them the way that God intended. That's it. It doesn't have to match what my neighbor necessarily does or what my neighbor necessarily thinks, but it has to match what I believe God asked me to do. They have to be cared for well. When I think of my children, I am their steward. They were given to me to care for. I want to teach them as much as I can about life. I want to prepare them as much as I can to go out and become solid citizens and, and adults that are dependable. When I look at anything that I've been given, it's my job to care for it in the best way possible. It's actually my job to care for my personal life the same way. When it comes to your personal life, being a good steward of everything that you have, everything that is around you, it doesn't matter if it's taking care of your house, fixing things that need to be fixed, cleaning out your garage, taking care of your vehicle. Being a good steward just means taking care of what's given to you. God's given us these gifts. Let's care for them the best we possibly can. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I've had a great time starting this colt. Look forward to seeing you at Road to the Horse. And until then, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever. Just to have the chance